If you are testing for a law enforcement promotion to the supervisory ranks of corporal, sergeant, lieutenant, or captain, and an oral board interview or oral assessment is part of your process, you are in the right place. In a few minutes, you will see demonstrations on how I would respond to a tell us about yourself, critical incident, and closing statement if asked of me at an oral board. But before that, let me welcome you to module one of the Oral Boards Made Easy for Police Promotion video series and congratulate you on taking a very positive step to be sure you are at your best for your police promotion oral board. If you are like me, your promotion is very important to you and the opportunities for promotion are infrequent, making it all the more important that you be at your best this time around. In many cases, the timing of your promotion is also important. The sooner you achieve each promotion, the sooner you will be eligible for the next promotion opportunity. You are viewing the first module of the Oral Boards Made Easy for Police Promotion video series. This program is unique and based on observation and risks that I took in my career in seeking to achieve my promotions. By me absorbing that risk when I was testing and seeing positive results from those risks, I have decreased the risk for you. One of my early observations when studying for my sergeant oral board was that there exists common elements in many oral board critical incident or situational questions. The risk that I took was to incorporate these newly discovered common elements into my study procedure. In other words, I was not just studying policies and procedures for my sergeant oral board, I was also applying the common steps that I identified as part of my preparation plan. Lo and behold, I achieved the top oral board score and was promoted in the number one position on the sergeant list in front of over 200 original competitors. As for the easy part of oral boards made easy, by studying common steps rather than every possible type of situation, I was able to make my answers easy to remember. My lieutenant's test followed about five years later. By this time, I had started perfecting my oral boards process and extending it to other categories of questions rather than just incidents and situations. Once again, I was promoted in the number one position among the 40 competitors for promotion. My process, which is now called Oral Boards Made Easy, has been under constant refinement and improvement ever since. I applied what I was developing on my next two promotion opportunities, one for captain with an oral board and 18 competitors, and the next for assistant chief with an assessment center and 12 competitors. And in both cases, I was promoted in the number one position. That's right, many of the strategies in oral boards made easy for police promotion can be applied at assessment centers as well. What started as a simple observation and a bit of pre preparation risk taking ultimately resulted in me holding the distinction of being the only member in the history of the 400 plus sworn Hartford, Connecticut Police Department to ever be promoted in the number one position to Sergeant, Lieutenant, Captain and Assistant Chief after competitive testing. And before you start thinking that I went into this with any sort of an oral board performance edge, know this. Prior to becoming a police officer, I had been a B student in college and I had a phobia of public speaking. Now that I am no longer competing in oral boards and assessment centers, my lessons learned are now made available to promotion candidates like you. Before I do the answer demonstrations, let me give you an overview of this program so that you can see how it has been designed with you and your oral board process in mind, despite the wide variety of oral board processes that are conducted. This program has these major elements. A process for you to build your customized success plan. Specific tips, otherwise known as point earners, that can help you rise above the pack. A strategy for building a response to help sell yourself to the panel to include a powerful closing. An overview, questions, and model answers for interviews, experiential questions, knowledge questions, and rapid fire oral board processes. And then the core of the Oral Boards Made Easy program, acronyms that help you give complete responses for topics such as ethics, leadership, delegation, community policing, planning and organizing, discipline, performance counseling, resolving conflicts, and critical incident or situational questions. You will see me demonstrate answers for each of these areas, and you will have multiple rounds of questions presented to you 
for you to practice what you are learning. So, let's start. In this first module, I will demonstrate my responses to the very commonly asked, tell us about yourself, as though I were testing for sergeant. You will see a more detailed version of this demonstration for the captain rank further on in the program. The second demonstration you will see in this module will be for critical incident or situation questions. In this case, I will demonstrate a solid answer without regard for what the question is. Can you imagine being able to answer nearly any situational question regardless of what situation they present to you merely by knowing an acronym? And lastly, I will give a closing statement demonstration that uses a structure that is positive, shows appreciation, and highlights my readiness for promotion. So, here it goes. I attended a state college immediately after high school and graduated after two years with an associate's degree in business administration. I was then accepted at a private university where I studied business marketing ultimately earning a Bachelor's of Science degree in that field. Throughout my four years of college, I was employed as a security officer at a government contractor that was making Air Force jets. The sensitive nature of that work required me to achieve and maintain a United States government secret clearance. Shortly after graduation from the university, I was hired by a large international corporation to serve as a territory manager in New York City. While the work was challenging, it did not hold the fulfillment that I had been seeking and it became clear that the business world was not the right fit for me. I'm from a law enforcement family. My father, as well as uncles and cousins on both sides of my family, have served or are currently serving as police officers. It became clear that police work was my true calling, and I pursued and achieved the position with the Hartford Police Department. My first five years were served in the patrol division, serving as a footbeat officer in high crime neighborhoods, a relief officer throughout the city, and a cruiser officer downtown. During this time, I responded to an incident in which a mentally disturbed, knife-wielding man was threatening his family. My partner and I successfully prevented the family from being harmed and were formally recognized by our department for our actions. Shortly thereafter, I was handpicked by my sergeant to serve in a proactive two-officer directed patrol unit. Seeking to take on greater responsibilities and challenges, I requested and received an assignment from the patrol division to our department's Crime Suppression Unit. This assignment required even greater proactive police work, focused on the deterrence of street-level crimes, street gang activity, and street-level narcotic sales. While in this assignment, I received specialized training in the area of narcotics investigations, as well as having had the opportunity to attend the prestigious Connecticut State's Attorney Legal Training Course, focusing on the latest case law and their application to police practices. It was during this time that I suggested to my supervisor a motor vehicle enforcement strategy to bring about a reduction in drive-by shootings, something that was adopted and achieved desired results. At this time, I am currently serving in the Crime Suppression Unit. In order to prepare myself for the position of sergeant, I sought out, paid for, and attended on my own time a 14-week program to refine my leadership and communication skills. This program sharpened my public speaking proficiency while also providing me with important insight into effective leadership communication. I believe it is a combination of my business education and experiences which have provided me with an understanding of management practices. My diverse police experiences attained from my patrol assignment as well as serving as a member of the proactive crime suppression unit and my commitment to ongoing self-development as evidenced by my pursuit of leadership and communication training that have well prepared me to serve at the rank of sergeant, and I am very eager to do so. As you may have noticed, I applied a chronological structure to my response. This was done because I am telling a story. Stories that are chronological are easier to follow and tend to put achievements and growth in perspective. When I demonstrate this further along in the program, I will show you a process to simplify your recall of this information so that it sounds conversational, and so that you are less likely to leave out important details. Now, onto the situational model that is covered in full in a later part of the program. For handling critical incidents or situations, I have found that my sergeant acronym covers most, if not all of the key elements in a response, at least in a general sense. 
Ideally, you will be applying your law enforcement knowledge to this acronym so that you are providing the panel with a really strong response. But what if you do not know the answer to the question? Well, watch below and you will see how I give a critical incident response without even knowing the question. As a lieutenant, the first thing that I would do is become immediately involved in this situation by showing up. While en route to the location, I would be evaluating the information being provided from the officers already on scene. If a sergeant has yet to be dispatched, I will contact dispatch and have one respond. If this situation requires radio silence, that direction would be given. My objective while en route is to obtain as much information as possible before arriving on the scene. I will notify dispatch once I have arrived on scene and announce that I have taken command of this operation. I will then conduct a first-hand visual observation of the scene while seeking additional information from the first officer who arrived. With this information considered, I will notify dispatch of the resources that are required. If appropriate, I will also provide instructions on the routes that should be taken by those resources as well as the desired staging point. While communicating with dispatch, I will instruct the dispatcher to notify my captain of the situation and inform the captain that once the situation is stabilized, I will contact him directly with updates. Next, I will turn my attention to the victims or potential victims. If anyone has been harmed in this incident, I will assure that they are receiving the appropriate level of care dictated by their injuries. If anybody is at risk of being harmed, I will assure that the sergeant is directing his or her resources to mitigate that harm. Once victims or potential victims have been addressed, my next concern will be the containment of this incident. I will assure that the sergeant has directed resources to protect the scene from contamination, while assuring that the situation is not allowed to get any larger. It is important that investigative integrity and public safety are both addressed at this stage. Once contained, a methodical application of our investigative process will commence. I will obtain responsibility for this investigation unless relieved by my captain or until the investigation is transferred to the investigative division commander. Should this investigation remain with me, I will evaluate the course of action that the sergeant is suggesting and, if appropriate, approve his or her course of action. If I see a deficiency in that recommended approach, I will intervene to assure an effective investigation. Once the investigation has concluded, I will instruct the sergeant to assure that all officers on scene submit a report for the sergeant to evaluate for completeness and accuracy. I will direct the sergeant to complete a report on all activities conducted and I will complete my own report that covers the actions that I took from beginning to end. Within a reasonable period of time, I will call for a debriefing meeting that involves the key parties for the purpose of evaluating and improving our response to these types of incidents. I will have the sergeant accompany me to this meeting and serve as the recorder. The sergeant will then be directed to prepare an after action report based upon this meeting and to submit it to me for review prior to me sending it forward to my captain. And that is how I would handle this incident as a at the rank of lieutenant. What was the incident? It could have been anything. This strategy allows for a generic, complete response. Without knowing this type of strategy, you will be faced with two options if presented with an incident for which you do not recall the answer. Option one would be to make something up, while option two would be to, to pass on the question altogether without even giving a reply. Imagine never having to have that concern again, because you will have an answer. When I cover this module later in the program, I will go into depth on each of the eight steps in the SARGENT acronym so that you are well versed on its application. Commonly, when your oral panel comes to an end, you will be given an opportunity to make a brief closing remark. Too many candidates do not take this seriously, which is very unfortunate. You see, the concept of recency in the study of communication patterns shows that the words that are spoken last in an exchange are often the words that are most remembered. For this reason, your closing statement should be structured for maximum impact. The format that I recommend shows appreciation for the panel, a summary statement on candidate qualifications, and an eagerness to serve. Here is how I put all of that together if I were testing for the rank of captain and if the panel of assessors was from outside of my police department.
First, I would like to thank the panel members for taking time out of their busy schedules to assist our department with this important process. I believe that my strong understanding of management practices stemming from my business degree and experience, my accomplishments in diverse police assignments from patrol to crime suppression to the police academy and bomb squad, and my ongoing commitment to the professional development of department personnel through my delivery of formal and informal training has prepared me well to serve this agency as its next captain, and I am very eager to do so. See the impact? I have known candidates to end their oral board by just saying no to that question. That's right, the last word the panel heard from the candidate was negative, and that is what gets remembered. Hopefully, you now realize that there is a better way. In future modules, you will learn the steps that were used to build the three responses that you just observed, as well as all of the strategies mentioned at the beginning of this module. Beyond answer strategies that you cannot get anywhere else, you will also be exposed to the Learn, See, Do model of skill development. How does this work? The learning for you will come from the lessons that I will teach you in the remaining modules. The C will come from the dozens of answer demonstration videos that are used to illustrate the application of what you are learning. And the do comes from the ample questions that I ask of you via video to create the experience for you of answering verbal questions at an oral board or interview. For those of you who will be participating in an assessment center, I will explain how you can use my performance counseling and critical incident models for your role play exercises. You know that being your best requires practice. With this program's 24-7 access, you can learn and practice at the times that are best for you. I have been fortunate to have had the experience of being at the top of each of my promotional lists, and I will tell you, it was a great feeling. Oral Boards Made Easy for Police Promotion was created so that more law enforcement professionals could replicate my successes. If this is what you are seeking, isn't it worth investing in yourself by continuing on to Module 2? I wish you much success in your promotion pursuit.